So welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for May 4th, 2022. The time is 6 p.m. Um, this is a hybrid meeting uh, located at um, municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Uh, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain provisions of COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or and or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcasts unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room at the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation noted below, uh, which is really the uh, toll-free number is 1-833-548-0276 if you'd like to dial in. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and should you need a passcode, it's 570012. If you go to the Town of Deerfield website down in the bottom right under calendar, you'll see this a link for this select board meeting. And if you click on that, you'll see an agenda and there'll be a hyperlink to the Zoom meeting. So if you're attending, please mute your phone using star six for landlines, um, unless asking questions or commenting. All uh, attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Uh, we'll call the select board to order. And I think the first order of business, even though it's not on here, would be to reorganize our board because we just had an election. I'd like to congratulate Tim Hilchey on um, his election win and joining us on the board. And I also like to thank um, David Wolfram for his service to the town. Um, he was an excellent uh, selectman and did has done so much for this town over the many years. And it was just a real pleasure working with him and um, hope he continues to work with us in many other ways that we need help ser serving the residents. So. Carolyn, I can't hear you. You know, I would like to thank David Wolfram too for all the years that he's worked and done stuff and um, helped us move forward as a town. He always worked with us and, um, you know, he was our seniors, our homeless. He was trying to get them into the church and you know, get the church repairs done. And, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things that people don't realize about, you know, a lot of work gets done behind the scenes. I just, you know, want him to know that we appreciate everything yes. he's done. Absolutely. If that you might- hear that, Jennifer? Not, it, it's in and out. I mean, I was just texting Casey to tell Jonathan to switch your mic. I'm just gonna swap. Yeah, why don't we okay. swap the mic? Thank you. No. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. still clear. Yay. Start we over. I would like to thank Dave Wolfram <laughs> again for all his work behind the scenes. Times. And, um, you know, our seniors are homeless and he has been working very hard to try to get this, you know, seniors in the church. And that that's hugely important. Um, you know, a lot of work was done. A, a lot of things happen that we do not on camera. And um, so I just want to appreciate everything that he's done over the years. Absolutely. And with scams and mm -hmm. you know all that, there's, right. a, there's a lot of work. So the other um, kind of unwritten rule that we do in, I guess, since I've been here, is that the whoever's up for election in a year, like Dave was up uh, last year, runs uh, is a chair of the select board. However, we are chair of quite a few things: sewer commission, board of health. I I honestly um, would first like to make a motion to um, to recommend that. Um, Carolyn Nest continue on as board of health chair if you're interested in serving still um, to do that. that. That's fine as long as as long as you both for, keep participating yeah. because um, I, I I think we're in for a really hard year. I do too. It's um, not as easy as we thought it was going to be. Well, 
we knew this was, I mean, I knew that this was going to be a while, but um, you just can't predict what's happening. And mm -hmm. we've got to get, I mean, our number one goal is to keep the schools open right. and safe. And we've got to figure out over the next, between now and August, where our game plan is going to be. Right. And hopefully we can make it to the end of the school year. If we have an uptick in cases, both at the school and in the community. And, you know, there's a few hospitalizations and yeah. we really, we need people to still pay attention. We still have a pandemic. This, there's no question this XE that is, you know, we've sequenced here, mm -hmm. this hybrid um, variant is, is still mild, but it's very contagious. And people just need, you know, to make mm -hmm. sure that we're paying attention, have a little social distance. Yeah. If you're in a space that isn't, has air circulation, please wear a mask, right. you know, just, and, and also long COVID. If you have long COVID conditions, please call us at our board of health. We're going to, we're just taking down the information. It's hundred percent confidential, but we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with, um, mm -hmm. you know, long COVID conditions. Yeah. There's and, a lot of people who have gotten COVID mild, not a big deal, but then they're realizing the long-term effects of it are, you know, the, the it's 10 to 20% and... of the people that get COVID have long-term effects. And what we're trying to do is figure out what they are, keep the information so that we can forward it on to the CDC and have some kind of data return right. of what we're supposed to do right? and what people are supposed to do. So, so I'll make that motion to appoint you as chair again, if you're willing to serve again as yes. the Board of Health Chair. And I will second that motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Tim Hilchey. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank Great. you. Um, I, I appreciate your confidence and- Total confidence in you to do that job. <laughs> no doubt about it. Um, um, well, then I, in turn, would make a motion to um, appoint you uh, as chair of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. And I would second that motion. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Tim Hilchey. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Thank you so much. I also would make a motion to appoint Tim Hilchey to serve on uh, SCEM's Board of Oversight, unless um, you're the fiduciary, unless you want to take oh, no, that no, and Tim no. be fiduciary, or however you want no, to do that. But... I think it would be good for Tim to come on as um, um, our representative. Yeah, our representative. I don't mind continuing as a fiduciary, um, but okay. we, we, it's important to have someone really active mm -hmm. um, participating. Right. So I, I will make that motion. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. We're signing you up. So. <laughs> You're out, so um, okay. just, um, You're outvoted. <laughs> normally, we also have the chair represent us at the FERCOG. So I mm -hmm. would just make a motion that, Trevor, you continue at the FERCOG Thank for you. another year. Yep. Awesome. And I'll second that motion. And, and in in with that, and I'll, uh, in with that, I, we also have um, a friendly amendment to have Casey Warren as an alternate. Oh yes, been, Casey is an alternate, and she's continue. also been serving uh, on the finance committee there and the, and the personnel board there. So those are the meetings she attends. I just do the kind of the general council thing at the time. I'd really appreciate it because it's yes, just it's like a lot of work. Yeah, it's good to have meeting. many people involved. So um, so all those in favor. Hi, Tim Hilchey. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. I think Is there that's anything it. else that we have to do? Automatically a sewer commissioner. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you're sort of, I mean, we could make you chair of that. No, else. that's, we're all okay. team members on that. <laughs> so you do need a chair, right? <laughs> I don't think I don't know so. Do you really a chair? The, uh, I don't sewer commissioner? Really, you're signing a sewer commission unless you do a duty, an authorization to do a yeah. sewer commissioner. I don't know that we've had to do that. We haven't done that no, in the past. Really. I don't, well, we have to for the USDA grant. Uh, it could be. I just signed as chair of the select board okay. last time. Okay, so um, I just remember. He's chair of the select board again. So just we'll just have him sign yeah. it. Um, the other, there's one other thing too that I can think of. Um, well, we'll think of it. Yeah, we will. I'm Maybe sure by the end of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the, we'll one, the one thing that board. before we move on, I know we have, we don't mm -hmm. want to talk about it. We we sh we really need to set our we need to have a little meeting just to set our priorities in general. Mm -hmm. yep. We have priorities that we have to address immediately, and we need to, they're actionable. Like we need to make sure that we get that waiver for the school financing. Mm -hmm. It's got to be before that woman retires this summer. 
we need to make sure it's permanent and not you know, year, one that would every yeah. year or ha help have her help us. I mean, that's real money. That's 300,000 mm -hmm. coming in minimum, minimum. I mean, it could even be more. Right. So yeah. we need to make sure that we follow up on that in the next couple months. We only have within three to four weeks of, you know, we got to really make sure this ARPA money, we get some money for the senior center. And, you know, so do you mind if I go to, I since we voted for the town hall, you know, to mm -hmm. move ahead with the Glamour School Senior yeah. Center design, do you mind if I go to Sunderland and Waitley and ask them to support, let yes, us support great. for the Senior Center? Because, you know, we're renovating and adding on to the Senior Center so that, I mean, to the old grammar school to be, and then we can add on to the have with a new senior center in the most inexpensive way it we is. can. Right. And we've got to get money to do that because our seniors have no permanent home. Well, speaking with Natalie recently, she was saying that the state is slow walking that second half of ARPA money because the state is so flush with. I know, but that's I why know. we got to get exactly. in there. And so we got to do that. <clears throat> the other thing that has come up is the library commissioners meet the first week of every month. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really critical that we go work with the library and try to get on the agenda for the library commissioners, the state library mm -hmm. commissioners in June, because our award, our $4 million award was based on pre-COVID conditions. There, yeah. there was no built-in escalator for the right. COVID, yeah, post-COVID. Right, but it's right, not nothing like that. 40. So it's totally unfair totally unfair mm -hmm. so we need to have some appeal process pursue some kind of appeal process so we need to work with the library on that mm -hmm. before that award is yep. like solid for sure so there's a couple things that we need to do in the next two or three weeks yeah we'll have to get a little well margaret marguerite willis from charlemont select, mm -hmm. board, select board in charlemont Kim, yep. um she she is really concerned so she wanted us to have a selectman's county selectman mm -hmm. meeting, but I told her that's fine. But the problem is you can't, you know, it has to be like a month out and then we, you know, get yeah, together. Yeah, we're talking and, June right now. Right, so I think, Tim, I'm going to take advantage of you immediately, <laughs> is I think we need to craft an email to all the select boards <clears> in Franklin <throat> County and, and tell them that this is scandalous, mm -hmm. that they're all this ARPA money and we aren't able to get anything here in Western Mass. Yep. And so we need to just craft everybody an email and say, S contact your legislative delegation and really pressure them to Our say, seniors are we, looking need, for that letter too. we need to have ARPA money for you know some real projects here out. And we can reference Suzanne Bump's mm -hmm. um, Her study? report. Absolutely. And, and our senior center is, is front and center on that report on how awful it is, but there, but it's really, really scandalous that the, there is no investment out here in Western Mass for infrastructure yep. out of that ARPA money. I know. It's, it's, it's disgusting. Yep, absolutely. I'm, I'm really glad that they just, you know, gave us a little $250,000, but, <clears throat> you know, it's random money. We didn't even request anything like that. Yeah for downtown revitalization. It's great, we'll use it for the Leary lot, we'll use it for yep. stuff, but that is a freaking drop in the bucket. Yep, for sure. So anyway. Okay. All right, sorry. So, no, it's okay. Um, moving on, we have public comment. So are there um, any public like to oh, have any comment? Anybody here, anybody, anybody? Anna Lee has her hand raised. Welcome, Anna Lee. Thank you, thank you, yes. Um, I have two things. First of all, congratulations to everybody on getting through the election season and town meeting. Um, I know there are so many details that go on that none of us have a clue about. And so thank you for all of the uh, behind the scenes work and uh, working to make it go smoothly. Um, the first, in relation to town meeting, I do have a request that I hope you'll seriously consider for our next town meeting that um, we look at it on having it on a Saturday. This year, there were 106 people, mostly my generation, um, two years ago, which was during COVID, um, at town meeting on a Saturday morning, we had hundreds, hundreds of people um, with wide representation of different 
ages and different people in our town. Um, there is the argument that sports are on Saturday mornings, but clearly 100% of families don't have kids in sports. Um, but clearly most families can't come out on a school night to come to town meetings. So we've had our comparison test. Um, the results are in, and I really hope you can consider for our next town meeting that we um, try not to have it on the school night or work night. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the other thing is tonight, I did see on the agenda um, that Ember Gardens is on the agenda. Um, when they came to the planning board, Ember Gardens actually uh, volunteered to have monthly updates to the planning board on their progress with their construction. So I'm hoping tonight as you address it that you can codify that. It doesn't need to be a big deal, mm -hmm. a letter, you know, just an update. Um, we're really looking forward to knowing what's going on. So if you could help that happen, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good Thank comments. you, Annalie. <laughs> great. Any other public comment? I don't see any online. Nothing else? Okay, moving on. So uh, we don't have any scheduled hearings. We do have an appearance for Ember Garden, but I don't think they're appearing, right? They're we're just not. Doing some, they're not. We're signing what we voted last meeting, which was our, is it in this blue thing? It's in the blue folder. Blue folder. Yeah. So what that is, is that's the HCA that the board had agreed to. Yep. Um, that's the final with the duly authorized because the board had authorize the chair to sign so i okay. made the adjustment the other thing that the board has to sign is the certificate of completion which goes to the cannabis control commission and to your point mr chair through you may i answer this question yes please do so annalee they haven't they're just finalizing all of this paperwork so they don't have any updates on the property itself yet so they will, the next thing that they do is they send this paperwork in, we execute the contract, they send this paperwork to the Cannabis Control Commission, and then they'll have more information. So they'll start giving us updates on what the progression is because C uh, Cannabis Control has to issue them a license before they can physically start work. Like they have to be in process. All so right. I hope Thank that answers some of that concern because i had heard you make that comment at planning board too yes and we Thank you. definitely hope to have that happen for sure yep um, we're going to get that out as soon as you guys as soon as it's signed off and we scan it so that is done uh select board announcements reports so i only have just on one thing um please we we've had a, a fairly okay return so far but there we really want a fantastic return this is the um senior survey housing survey this is different than the survey that was um, sent out by UMass Boston for analyzing and assessing the senior programs. This is for senior housing. This will actually ask you, would you move into senior housing? Do you need senior housing? And this is what we take, the results of this survey is what we take and go find financing to do our project. So this is incredibly important. There's a little um, key code on, your, on, on this, and then you enter it into the survey. If you have any problems, um, Lily Dwight is, going, is volunteering to help anybody online and we can get help you know, at the senior center or anything, but it's very important that people, yes. anybody 55 and older, please return your um, do the survey and 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 use and do the card. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I, the only thing I really have to add is um, I want to thank Jennifer Remillard. Uh, she had done uh, a wonderful job putting together. She secured a grant and put together a um, a walk for the seniors, and it was held in Sunderland at the River Walk on Sunday, and it was a gorgeous day. Like you couldn't pick a better day for it. Um, really nice. So the clowns and 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 the. Uh, Sunderland Senior Housing was there with a table and all kinds of information. So it was really great to talk to them. They're very anxious to work with Deerfield and um, some good information there. So yes, please fill out that, that survey. Um, let's see. And uh, <clears throat> sewer stuff, I just wanna thank um, town meeting and thank the residents during the election for approving both the town meeting vote uh, for the uh, additional funding for the, the South Deerfield plant and for voting to approve the debt exclusion. So that was done. We held another meeting today, um, our monthly 
construction meeting at the plant and uh, things are going really well. I think um, there are some change orders, but they are kind of pluses and minuses. I think it kind of zeroing out right, right at the moment. So we're, I mean, th this far into that project, there'll be about 45% complete and not really had much for change orders. We've been in really good shape. So that helps our contingency to do more stuff. Um, so everything seems to be rolling along pretty good there. The electrical is the one thing. Um, you know, they still think they're going to complete on time uh, in February, but the, um, the one thing that's going to hold that up is electrical components. And right now, they even, like, they found out in April that the stuff they were expecting in May won't be here until September. So, oh. you know, we're getting, you know, and, and they still feel like it's still going to make it happen, but just knowing being in that industry, it, the lead times are, are unbelievable right now for stuff. So our contingency, we are holding a couple hundred, maybe 250,000 in contingency for electrical because that's the one area that you really get hit when you go to do a job. That, that, that's the one place that you may have um, some overages, but we think we're in pretty good shape there so far. So, um, so that was good. And we, we talked a little bit about what to do in the, you know, the options for old Deerfield and we need to kind of all get together as a, as a team to kind of start looking at that, that going forward. And we're, we'll keep working on that. So, um, along those lines, mm -hmm. um, Aquarian has come and they did, um, uh, well, they did a site visit plus they did, um, what, what day was it? Nine? They was last Gosh, I'm losing Tuesday. count of days. Well, anyway, Tuesday. it was last week, one of the days last they week. They met with Brenda and we got them some Yeah, so they got the financials, but they also did the site visit and met with them too. And so, I mean, we don't have an offer yet, but they're definitely interested. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's also potentially there too. Yep. Um, anything you no, want to add? Or I, no, I, I just basically want to say thank you to everyone who put their faith in me and um, I will try to return that faith. We definitely know you will, for sure. We're happy to work with you. So um, <clears throat> so then uh, I don't think we have minutes tonight. We are uh, moving on to discussion items. We have new pro LLC consideration. Oh, you know what? I just want to, oh, um, one update please. on the board. Of, two, well, actually two updates on the board of health oh, besides COVID. Yeah. Um, pay attention, COVID is still here. But um, uh, NATO, our, we had a small NATO grant. They allowed us, um, Alex did a um, resubmission of the budget. So we have up to $3,500 to spend on the transitioning of our nurse for the senior center. Cause we're so excited. We have 12 hours in the senior center for nursing. And we have now we could um, have, you know, pre July 1st, um, transitioning time That's funded. Important. So Very it's important. hugely important. Thank you. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And an additional grant, 10 year grant for $360,000 a year was put in a joint grant with Greenfield, Montague, Sunderland, Leverett and Shootsbury. And we are putting in for two full time social workers. And so I am so, so excited. Um, and a full time health agent that will you know, be able to be back up for us for vacation time or sick time mm -hmm. or when there's a huge amount of work that we get behind or whatever. Um, so that's really, really exciting. And that's a 10 year, $360,000 a year award. It's so it's awesome. a multi-million dollar award. So I'm, we're- and Greenfield's the lead on that? Greenfield's the lead mm -hmm. on that. Better. And so it's no, all we're right. gonna do is just have Take the hours, yeah. right. And it's similar to, um, the hours that we have already with 19 hours a week, we have with um, our nurse, Mary mm -hmm. Ellen Sloan. So this will be an additional nurse time plus the two social workers. So um, I'm very excited. I'm hoping we can meet with our little mini committee for social workers. So once we get the award, I hope next month we'll hear about it. Um, we can do a job, a real job description for what we feel we want. I mean, I want in my mind. I well, I certainly want the social worker to work with the outreach coordinator at the senior center, but work with our seniors, and also you know have follow up with the schools because the schools have some support and some you know staff, but we we want like a holistic approach, and um, 
So I w it would be really nice to have our little group that had come together to sort that out. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, we have a good chance great. of getting it. I know you've been working hard on that. I thank you. Well, I, again, I just wanted to say it was really nice. I appreciate work. you having faith in me to make do. sure <laughs> that it would happen. But also, you know, David and you took a risk and I, I appreciate it because I, I feel like we just needed to do a lot more mm -hmm. and it, it is grant funded. We are not spending any more money really than what we had been spending before. And um, we're just the amount of hours that we're getting is just, um, yeah, I, I think you the know, multiplied, are multiplied a by a yeah. lot. So yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. And I, yeah. I feel like our seniors are going to have real care. Yep. That'll be great. Yeah. Be great to see that. It's like it's Alex cool. is got his hand up. I don't know. Hey, Alex. Hey, how's it going, Trevor? Hey, w welcome aboard, uh, Tim. Uh, so I quick question, is this the Board of Health time? Should we mention a little bit about the, um, the COVID vaccination clinic happening? Oh, yes, yes, Elementary? Alex. May 20th. Yep, go yes, ahead. go ahead. Uh, well, you just took it right there. So May 20th, we have our uh, Deerfield Elementary School uh, vaccination clinic. I'm going to share my screen, um, if I may, and just do it this way uh, as I talk. And uh, nice to have a little visual uh, with a flyer here. And uh, it's from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. Uh, we are working with uh, Walgreens and they're gonna be the immunizers there. Um, I think right now we have 23 people signed up. Um, so at the, Walgreens has told me that th there's no limit. Uh, if we keep adding, um, you know, 20, 20 more spots is gonna be an additional immunizer. So it's going to be a constant, you know, people won't have to be waiting um, as they have in the, in the past with the 400 plus clinics, number of people that we had at the clinics. Um, so you can register. Unfortunately, there's no Johnson & Johnson vaccine offered at this time, uh, but you can definitely go for your Pfizer and your Moderna. And if you have any questions or concerns, you know, contact Carolyn. Um, and uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, you can contact me, uh, email the board. No, people can contact me. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this. We also have one scheduled for August 26th yep. before kids go back to school. So yep. please, this, this booster is in time. And it, it is, you know, if you were in, got your initial shots in December at our clinics at the elementary schools in Sunderland or Deerfield, then this you are in line for a booster at this clinic. So come in, hopefully in the next year or two, they'll have a vaccine that has more durability. But right now with the new variants constantly coming, it's just really important to get a booster. And, um, but if you haven't had a vaccine and this is your first one, please come too. We'll make sure that you get your second shot. Great. So anybody that wants a shot, please come. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it very much. <clears throat> so moving on to the discussion items, um, we have new pro LLC consideration of tax incentive in, incentive financing, which is a tip um, for a business that looking to come to town. I would want to. Um, Jeff's here. Oh, Jeff. We have like? Jeff on. Oh, hi, yeah. Jeff. How are you? Welcome. 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 We need to move this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The camera's Sorry, it's like not right you, in the way. A little bit. <laughs> No, that's okay. That's that's fine. We'll fix it. I'm sorry. How are you, Jeff? Good. Doing well. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing good. Doing good. good. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to see you in person, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I would have been there, but we got a full house with our our youngest one and our five year old. They're both on. Uh, they've had about a month long oh, cough, yeah. so they're on. Uh, and our eighteen month old's got some teeth coming in so i don't want to stress mom out a little bit <laughs> much tonight so we're uh no just gonna, I'll, I'll jump in the office for a little bit here and uh keep yeah. the house do you want to give us a little update on where you're at on the project sure. and yeah yep so you know we've really spent the last uh you know this all started i think end of august early september um you know with our with our quest to try to find a new home and, and we quickly had learned about the uh, the old pickle factory you know land and contacted the town and and quickly put together a um a proposal and you know put some bids in on uh, parcels uh, one and 
one and two on Merrigan and Merrigan Way and kind of in parallel, you know, even with that, we had contacted uh, one development, we had, you know, been conversing with them on and off for a year, you know, do we want to um, expand in the building that we're in currently, you know, really in Waitley um, that we, we rent. So we talked about buying that one and, and putting an expansion on, but we knew simply that would just buy us a year. That's it. Not, you're not, not looking out our five and 10 year plan. And, um, so we've been working with, uh, you know, Derek and, and his, uh, his crew at One Development and, you know, really in parallel with putting the offer in and, you know, being, you know, awarded the bid, we already began developing a, a building, right? A facility that might, might house that nine acre parcel. <laughs> so, um, you know, where we're at today is we completed a phase one environmental, the phase two is complete. There's a few potential, um, you know, call them existing conditions, possibly a underground storage tank that is there or not there. Not the paperwork isn't, you know, great, the greatest uh, traceability. So nothing that's really um, scared us away, but there could be some costs there. And, you know, we're, we're fine with that. Um, but hand in hand with one development, we have, you know, pretty much... Um, designed roughly 110,000 square foot facility, uh, the inside and the outside of the structure, um, including the warehouse offices, um, working with the architects now, um, putting the, the bids out and we're starting to receive the, some initial costs now on the, on, on the building. So the building alone um, you know, will be between 18 and 23 million uh, for the pretty much the exterior as well as the offices and the components of um, call it the interior. We do expect to spend another eight to ten million dollars on could be 12 million. You know, the processing equipment keeps going up every month now. So if we just installed two brand new machines in a facility that we lease on five and ten, the old Deerfield Plastics facility. And it took about 10 to 12 months for the equipment to come in and that's the price increases were part of it. And, you know, those price increases went up in some stuff, 15 to 20%. So, yep. you know, the eight to 10 right now could be 10 to 14 by the time we're, <laughs> we're in and the equipment's being delivered. So, you know, we're looking at it as a $30 million investment, you know, all in um, we've continued to hire um, employees. So, you know, earlier in the year when I had drafted kind of our initial intent that we want to proceed with, you know, the phase two to the town, we had, you know, maybe 46, 47 employees. We have 51 as of today. We almost can't hire and train them fast enough. That's that's part of a uh, little bit of a hurdle that we're trying to overcome. We're recently we've been having some issues with raw material availability. So we're still committed to um, hiring and training um, at a reduced capacity. So the output is really the, the, big, um, the big hurdle that we're trying to, to look at. But, you know, when we joined Orifol one year ago, 12 months ago, Orifol was um, an old client of mine who had reached out to see if we, they could, we could produce some material for their, for their products and, you know, can do, can we make their product for them? We didn't have the, we didn't have the space. We didn't have the space. We didn't have the employees. So they asked, can we join our, uh, our forces and, and help uh, create good things? So we've done that. And they're able to, you know, see that big vision. Don't let, don't let COVID scare you. And they're, they're really willing to, you know, invest the, the capital to, we're going to build a facility we're going to fill it with equipment and we're going to hire and it's all going to come back. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's reassuring when you're with a company that's been around for, you know, started in Germany 30, almost 40 years ago. Yeah. And they're, they're having their struggles in Germany too, but they're starting um, uh, a, a huge project, about $150 million expansion in Germany during these times too. So they're, they have another one going in, one of our sister plants in the, in Michigan. Um, so they're not really, um, they're, they're kind of that, that field of dreams build in, it will come mentality. Yep. So that's good. It's reassuring that you're, you're backed by a, uh, a large corporation that can just keep plowing ahead and look and look through this, you know, and, um, 
So, you know, that leads us to where we are today, right? So we've invested quite a bit of money and time into developing the architecture and uh, with all the vendors and all the auxiliary equipment and the quotes are, I would say, maybe 30 days away from having everything pretty much finalized. And now we're down to the point of what can we look at from at the state level and the town level for some some TIFs and some special tax assessments um, to stay local. And you know, one thing with, with Oracle is we want to keep the business here in Franklin County. I do. I live here. I grew up here. Half of our staff grew up in Franklin County. Half of the other staff is really coming up from the Springfield area. Um, you know, so we do we do have them coming from all over. Um, typically more from the south though that's where we can we seem to be able to hire more from the south of uh south of northampton really um so what i did was i asked um you know what have you what has orful seen in their recent um expansions from at the at the state levels at the town levels and we put this together based on what they had recently seen in those counties and towns and cities for tax, you know, tax incentives. Um, being a 10 year, look, looking at it, what can we look at um, from at a town level for over 10 years? So if that is, you know, anything that we can, you know, openly discuss during this meeting or you take into consideration, you know, what is the best that we can um, look at, you know, mutually to I'll call called the town of Deerfield our, our future home, right? Yeah, so I think what we would do is um, I, I would nominate uh, Carolyn to um, and pull together a few, uh, Casey and, and put a, um, a TIF committee together to kind of study this and see what we can do and then um, be able to respond to your request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we usually do this on as a committee. Um, we have an assessor and, you know, in the past we've had you know, Casey and an assessor or, you know, our town administrator, our assessor, and sometimes, I don't know, lawyer. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah finance. we finance committee, maybe. Um, we, we have a group of people saying what, you know, what, what's our stake in this? And we certainly want to be supportive, but we also have to be realistic. So, um, I wouldn't want to say that we, you know, wouldn't consider what you have proposed, but we probably would have negotiations happen. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think that's um, realistic and, and fair. I, I was um, talking to quite a few people in Franklin County about what is kind of typical. And I think, you know, this ask is my, it, it, those are in different parts of the, of the country, right? Yep. So. I'm a realist and we can hopefully work, work through this and uh... right. that would be great. That'd All be right. Great. So I would make a motion to nominate um, Carolyn because we've had experience doing that and to put in and, and work with Casey uh, again well, to put together a team. Uh, so to do what that. we would do is ask the um, ask a member of the assessors. Right. And it may be useful to have Brenda. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think Brenda would be a good yeah because we're, we're we we really have I, I don't want to say it's we're in desperate straits but certainly in my 20 plus years as select board and you know 20 something years as a volunteer before that um in on town boards we really have to be sustainable and we have to watch our revenue. So we just, there's just no wiggle room anymore. So I, I, I don't want you to think that we won't take in every consideration, but I think we have to really plan. Yeah, just put together a team and come up with, yeah. uh, uh, you know, look at the look at the ask and see what we can do. Yeah, That'd I think that would actually be a really yeah. good choice. If I could, Trevor, um, this is Derek Owen Development. Oh, hi there. How you doing? Good. Um, I just like to interject and just say, you know, Jeff and his company are making a significant um, investment in the town of Deerfield. Not only are they going to bring new employment, but um, that employment is going to bring business increases at local restaurants and different things for lunch breaks. So, you know, your your local economy is going to um, achieve goals from this development, right? And and this isn't a, a five-year investment plan. This is a hundred-year investment plan. This facility is coming here. They're, built, they're committing to a 100,000 square foot facility that's gonna be here for 
a hundred plus years, right? They're, they're, they're going to be in business. They're not, they're not going to leave. So, um, you know, I would ask you to, you know, consider that when you do do this TIF uh, review, because they're willing to make a large investment and it's a large burden on their, their company right now. Right. And if I could, I'd like to just kind of share a rendering of what we're, we're um, going to build out there. So you can kind of get a level of detail of what we're shooting for out here and the amount of money they're going to spend. That's fine. Yep. Yep. I'll, I'll allow that. Can you all see my screen? All right. Yes. So what you have here in the front is their main office facility, which is going to be around 9,000 square feet. Um, in the back is going to be their uh, warehouse and production space, which um, composes of about 78,000 square feet. And there will be about another 10,000 square feet for their maintenance shop. Um, this, this build here is architecturally appealing and, and there's much cheaper options to do this, but they want to bring a beautiful building to Deerfield. And I think that should be held into account when you're uh, reviewing their TIF package. And that's all I really have, guys. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it looks nice and it'll definitely complement, you know, Pilot and, and our beautiful town garage. Yeah, that's what we we're trying to do, match the architectural aspects. Oh, it, of the local it looks building. really good. It looks like it'd fit in very nice there. We'd love to yep. have that building I, I, I just want to say that when the town, we went to town meeting and, you know, this was my idea to do this was to bring in above, you know, minimum wage jobs, really good jobs, skilled jobs, and a really good local employers. And mm -hmm. so I'm very, very pleased that this is panning out. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. And we are very supportive. I don't want yeah. you to think we weren't being supportive. Yeah, we'll just evaluate it. And yeah. sit down. Yep, sounds good. So I've made that motion. And I will second the motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for the, the update and, and, and the vision there. That's great. And we'll, um, we'll be back in touch shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Sure. Um, okay, uh, next is to endorse a bill to study the wild and scenic river designation for segments of the Deerfield River. And this is um, a project that um, Chris Curtis had brought to us oh, maybe a year or so ago yep. now. Um, and he's been working the, um, all angles to kind of get this moving. And um, there is uh, some language here in our packet. Is Chris on tonight? No, probably not. No. I don't see him there. So, um, and really, they're just looking for a, a blessing to move forward on on this language and to support the um, support to endorse the bill. I, I make a motion that we, as a town, support and endorse uh, this bill. And I will second that motion. Thank you. I and think it's um, what this does is allow it. It provides um, grant opportunities. It does. There's there's um, quite a you know a, a lot of the major tributaries to the river and. Um, it's a fairly short bill, so it's, <laughs> it's hopefully it just goes sailing right through. Uh, but it, it, the Deerfield River is just an amazing place. Um, it's known all around the country for um, fly fishing and recreation, and it's just it's a very unique space. White water, white water raft, and I mean yeah. it's just a really nice a nice spot, and we're lucky to have it coming through our town. So, um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a Chapter 61A right of first refusal and 120 day waiver request for Stockbridge Road. This is a parcel at 18 Stockbridge Road. Um, I think there's a first request, and then there was some further stuff deeper in this packet. Right? Uh, well, I would make a motion that we waive the 120 day um, waiting period. I'll second that for discussion. So do you want to give a little background on what we're doing? What, what, what this normally is for the public and what they're trying well, to do? Well, we, the, when you have 61A, it's a reduced farmland. Um, it's a tax rate, a reduced tax rate for farm, putting your farm, your land into um, agricultural production. And because you have a reduced tax rate, the town has a right, um, as, a, as supporting of agriculture, we have the right to purchase a property. And, what, and there's a 100 day, 120 day window that allows us to raise the money 
and make the offer for the property. Um, and I would say that um, this is, you know, this would support the operation of the of a bigger farm package. And um, so we would waive the rights because we would not want to deal with the plans of the landowner. So I know they plan to build on it, right? And so is it in 61A now? Yes. And so this is coming out of 61A. Yes. And, yes. and there's a whole process for paying some back taxes and yes. all that stuff yes. when they do that. So, right. and this is just um, because it's coming out of 61A, we have the right to purchase the property, which okay. we're not interested in doing. I don't think, right? No, not no. yet. So well, we're going to make no, it, we're gonna because, take a vote on that. <laughs> right. Well, what the, what the persons are doing is they're going to continue the operation of the farm. Of the farm. Right. They're just building they're a home just, on it. They're just building a home on it for additional younger families. Yep. And that's always good to see new, new people right. uh, staying on the, on the property and keep it on in generations. So right. um, first we have a motion to do the 120 day waiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there, there are a few other things that, that I just want to bring up about this project it's come to the conservation commission okay and we've already uh, conditioned the fairly significant condition this there is an endangered turtle that is in the mill river mm -hmm. that's adjacent to the property and so that's another benefit of this they're they're going to restore a lot of uh, land to protected status and that's going to be in a deed restriction so every property owner after this will have to abide by those conditions okay. so it's it's actually good for the wildlife in that area great so, um i think the the lames are going to do a nice job yep well that's great it's good to hear so we have a motion on the table and a second for the 120 day yep. waiver any further discussion all those in favor tim hilchey aye uh, carolyn ness aye trevor mcdaniel aye and then we will also uh, entertain a motion to um, waive our right to purchase the property. Um, if it will not exercise its option to purchase the property. Yes, I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Tim Hilchey. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Okay, so we will each sign here. open <laughs> trevor yes i know it's in a different time in the agenda but relating to this property is the hundred um uh special permit that's over 500 feet yes because you're talking about it maybe if you wanted to unless you want to just stick with the Good agenda ground. yeah is it further down on the it is list <clears throat> Is a planning board request for comments, and I think I see that here. Right. Yeah, one second. Time page. Thank you. This goes here. Um, so there's a request for comments. There's a couple. I'll just skip over this one at the moment. We'll do this one. So this is the same property at 18 Stockbridge Road, special permit, the construction of a single family home with a driveway over 500 feet in length. Um, and this is for us to have comment or not on it. Um, and again, I haven't seen the property yet or the. Tim, what, do you have a recommendation yeah, on that? Sure. Um, so as part of the conservation commission process, we recommend this is an existing farm road oh. that goes into the property. So what they're proposing to do is stay within the confines of the existing dry uh, road. Uh, I believe they've had the police and fire departments out there. Yep. One of the conditions the Conservation Commission placed on this was to have the proper fill that will support fire fire trucks and so forth. There is a turnaround access um, that's an, also an existing um, element of the property. So it, my recommendation would be that the planning board should grant this, uh, you know, mm -hmm. this waiver um, because it, it's been approved by numerous other town uh, agencies. It's a special permit. Yeah, yeah. special permit. So uh, I guess my recommendation would be based on Tim's input that um, we have no concerns at this time. Yeah, I would second that motion. So we will fill that out. Is there anybody, any other discussion on it? 
All right. Sounds good. There's no concerns at this time. Otherwise, if you right, if you say, if you don't say anything, then they don't really know what. Yeah, whether you have any or not. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Finish that up after. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. good. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so next is updates to the Deerfield MVP plan. And where are we at? Um, we have culvert issues. I would yes, say. we do. But Tim, <laughs> I, I missed the um, last meeting. Do you want to go over this? Uh, Proposed additions to the MVP plan. The MVP meeting, I was unable to attend. Oh, oh geez. Uh, so maybe we can just yeah, leave I this mean, at the moment? Take a minute? Can we? Yeah. Is that Anna Lee and I were there. Oh, cool. Cool. there you go. Can you can you guys go over this? Because I, you know, Tim and I both missed that meeting. Well, basically, he asked whether or not we had put the update to the MVP plan before the board, and we said no, we hadn't. And so I put it on the agenda, and oh. that was basically the conversation about this at our MVP core group meeting. Correct, Annalie? I mean, I we so. About we talked about other things, but um, pertaining to this plan, it was just that we needed to submit it as part of the grant. Okay. These were, um, okay. So this is um, updating, add the following appendix to the plan of the flood, flood evacuation plan, um, action plan for historic Deerfield and land conservation plan for the Deerfield River floodplain, and then add the following recommendations, uh, section 10A, of the plan. Uh, so replace vulnerable culverts, fail culverts, is not provided. Um, oh, yeah, this is the pri priority. We, like we've done Mill Village, we've done Kelleher, we have five and 10. Uh, we have Wh Wapping Road, is that Brahms Pond Road? Brolton's. Brolton's. Brolton's Pond Road. Captain Lake of Drive and private culverts along North Main. So it looks like we were just updating the, uh, the italics. The italicized uh, ones on pages, on, I think it starts on the third page, 2022 okay. updates to recommendations. Right. And these are our priorities that we had. Um, yes. I, on, I just want to say on the nine, which is advance and coordinate emergency evacuation plans, including the Great River Hydro Emergency Action Plan, I am actually um, participating in a drill May 25th. So, okay, you know, we haven't had a real drill in. It's been a while. Yeah, I think since been, they were here. Yeah, I think it was be actually before a real drill. Right. I think we had an information session when right. I was on the board but at it was one before point. Before you were on the board, we had yeah. um, the Yankee Candle. We had this huge multi-state drill. So, um, this is a tabletop drill. This isn't a this isn't um, a functional drill. Okay. So. Um, I'm hoping that um, we can we can take our new evacuation plan, action plan, and incorporate it in the um, into the drill. We're going to forward it to them, and on the twenty for the twenty fifth. So, I mean, I can give an update afterward. Okay, that'd be but, wonderful. Um, we haven't, you know, we haven't had a recent drill, which is really worrisome because it. it there isn't a lot of communication between these companies now. I mean, we, we used to think TransCanada wasn't that great, but they look so good compared to these investment firms that now own the dams. They have real minimal staffing and they don't have like a 24 seven EOC and all that kind of stuff that you can call. So I, I, I feel like this is gonna be a really important drill and we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll report back and you know, we'll, okay. I, I think we're going to have some action items that we need to follow up on, but I'll just wait and see what happens yeah. first. Okay, so we just need to, um, I guess this is in front of us. I reviewed it and we would just um, entertain a motion to approve the uh, proposed additions to the Deerfield MVP plan. I will make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? I just want to mention one thing about number Please. nine and the additionals. Yeah. Um, the Conservation Commission recently met with the ERCOG representative and an, and an environmental engineer to 
look at possible 319 projects. Yeah. And it turns out that um, there is a potential for a 319 funded project related to the frontier uh, parking area. And it would, the, the purpose for 319 is to improve water quality. So mm -hmm. this would be um, perhaps redirecting water that's currently just coming off of the the, the parking lot and the road that comes in front of the parking lot and spilling it directly into the bloody brook. Right. Instead, putting it through a filtration process in an existing field next mm -hmm. to the parking area. So it could take runoff from the parking space and runoff from the, the road itself, filter it through, release it in as a cleaner, yeah. less silt and so forth. So, and huh. potentially at limited cost to us. So maybe in conjunction with MVP, right. would be a, a good thing too. Sounds good. Yes. Thank you for that. Yep, that'd be great. All those in favor? Tim Hill, G. Aye. Um, Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Thank you very much. Um, hazardous mitigation river and Pine Nook Roads. I think this is maybe just an update on what we're doing there, or what do you think? Well, I, this I, is, I, number one, I wanted to make sure that. Um, you both were up to date uh, with what I think we should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, we had a site visit with um, Mike Smith, who yep. is part of Bay State Roads. So he's very, very experienced. And um, my, I'm, I, I am, I don't want to say I'm nervous, but we, we've been watching River Road and mm -hmm. I, I'm really concerned that if we need to do the hazardous mitigation grant, there's no question because that's 75% reimbursement and we should move ahead with that. But, you know, the grant process and going out to bid and all that kind of stuff, we aren't going to do anything until next year. And, you know, we've been watching this for two years and it continues settles. Mm -hmm. So my thought process, I remember we had gotten that money for um, the July storm yeah. which which river road really did, was the majority of the damage yep. for us um and we already spent money trying to stabilize stuff so but we have two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars left of that original 300 and something and um my thought originally was okay let's use it towards the 25 percent match for the hazardous mitigation grant let's move forward mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm just rethinking this after doing more site visits and talking to mike smith i think we should reach out to cocots or whoever um because cocots had given us a quote mm -hmm. and just get the quote updated spend a little bit of that money maybe 30 or forty thousand dollars of it whatever cocots update is and and try to address some of that um, subsurface water right. that's destabilizing that area yeah. and see if we, I wouldn't want to put an open ditch in because that makes it just as dangerous as, you know, on the other side. But if we put some stone in a pipe, perforated pipe, and then put some stone in, on top of it. So, you know, it's not like an open ditch, but you direct some of that subsurface water down to the culvert because the culvert is not necessarily undersized. It's just not the water's it's too much water. There. It's, it's getting, not getting it's there. It's coming right, right across the road and, and it, eroding. And it, and it eroding. keeps settling. And I, and I just, you know, I am a little traumatized. One of my first events was in 2005 at Columbus Day weekend storm where river, I mean, uh, upper road, just half of it collapsed. And thank goodness, two o'clock in the morning, our police were out patrolling and they found it. I mean, it's dark. You know, just as you go over the Greenfield line, you know, towards Clarkdale, you know, that road just fell up, fell off. You know, I mean, it was a big hole that just yep. disappeared. And I'm, I'm so worried that it's unstable there that, you know, some night, dark night, big in the middle of a storm, it could drop away and, and someone could get hurt. So I feel like it's worth, because of the safety issue, I, you know, if it's a safety issue, it's really, we need to address it. The safety issue. So I feel like we should try to do some, so, you know, see if we can address some of that subsurface water that's coming off, sheeting off of the hillside there and see what happens. And as you're digging up along there, 
you can see what kind of soil we have there for sure. Is it, you know, cause it keeps settling and, and, you know, I mean, it's been a couple of years, but how long is it going to last? Is it going to last another year? I don't know. You never know. And, and for 30 or $40,000, we could see how much, how much water and the impact of that water in that area is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, no, I drove, I drove up at this Sunday and because there's been a lot of complaints on various social media entities um, about the condition of River Road and which, you know, when you get into the treed sections of the road are in pretty bad shape. And I know that they're on, it's on the pavement management plan with, you know, no, there's never enough money. So everyone's listening. There's never enough money to pave it all. Um, but we also need to address it. So, so that you have to find that happy medium with what you can do. We try to save up. Um, none of people's tax money goes to paving the roads. I know that people don't understand that, but that's just the reality. We take money from the state, which is tax money in all around. It's chapter you know, 90. Chapter 90 money comes from the state and we put that towards our, our paving. Um, and we have a pavement management plan that was laid out years ago. We probably need to update that at some point. And, um, but River Road is in bad shape, but we don't really want to pave it if it's sliding off the embankment too. But there are areas that we do want to improve and you know, fill in the potholes or, or repave some sections of that and then uh, really focus on this area. And there's definitely a clear, um, I saw it when this first came to light a couple of years ago when the water was coming off an old dirt road that goes up the mountain and somebody had kind of directed the water thinking they were helping, but it kind of just went right across the road and ate off the other side of the, and just the whole road is sliding in now. So we've been looking at ways to find grant money because the town doesn't have anywhere near that kind of money to kind of rebuild that whole road no, section between two and three million dollars yeah, yes it's just not going to happen we don't have that kind of money to do that so we're trying to get hazardous mitigation grant but i do think it's important to at least address the water and just looking at mike smith's report he's also saying you know we might run into some bedrock there but as much as you can dig out a ditch on that west side of, of river road so that we can fill it with round stone after you um you know after you do a pipe in or something like that to to get the water from to stop sheeting across the road and eating out the other side so i would be for putting in a, i mean you have to probably at that cost you'd have to do an rfp right to do well, yeah we have to, i think we have to go out to bid right Casey? go out to bid for that i would imagine for Rosewood. Yeah. so well, I think and we, we had an estimate in that direction we had an estimate but yeah. you know that was it's already old and right you know. things have changed and I mean, know, one, some of the change. confusion is you had, you know, a $20,000 quote, and then you had a $2.3 million quote. Right. It's like, yeah, there's like band-aiding or trying to fix right. it some way, but, or there's completely redoing the whole but road. I, but I feel like we have money from the mm -hmm. July storm fund, so it's not like we're going to take it out of already, you know, um, yeah. appropriated money for something else. So... But because it's a safety issue, I'm I'm, I'm I really concerned about. Yeah. And and if we see how much we can stabilize that area with just a little bit of, you know, um, piping mm -hmm. and and control of that subsurface water, maybe that's enough to keep the road from continuing to fall. Right. And then and, look at keeping that up a bit. Then that will impact what we're doing for the hazardous mitigation grant mm -hmm. application because. You know, you will have some control on the engineers because we somehow controlling some of the water. Right. So, I mean, I it would potentially reduce the cost of, you know, the, the, a long time repair. I yeah. I feel like it's really important that we need to do a long time repair there, but I'm also saying I just don't feel comfortable letting it wait for another whole year. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel, Tim, about um, that. I visited this. I've, this particular area with the chief of chart um, 10 days ago. And um, there is a definite need to do something, um, particularly because part of the, uh, the bank side uh, road mm -hmm. is falling away. Yeah. So I also think that in addition to the, the crushed stone and, and, and perforated pipe, it'll, it'll direct a large amount of the water to an existing culvert, which makes a lot of sense. And while you're doing that work, you can explore what is the soil condition there. Right. And um, th there was a suggestion too that to put a berm on the uh, 
the other side so that the water doesn't sheet off because there is a lot of erosion there. Yeah. And uh, that's a good point. Too. Yeah, so I am in yeah. favor of Do what doing what you're suggesting. Yeah, yeah. it would be, I mean, I'm not saying that thirty or forty thousand dollars or whatever, fifty thousand is isn't a small amount of money, but if if somebody gets hurt, it would be so awful. So I, I think this is like a temporary mm -hmm. and that it, but it would also give us the information to make a better decision for a long term fix. So maybe we um recommend Casey work with Chris and, and Kevin to kind of get a plan together and get a, a bid out and figure out what we really want to do there, working with Mike, you know, yeah. and, and then also, you know, looking at this as this and we circle back around to Carolyn's original discussion point, which was to use this as a match for hazardous mitigation. We need to keep that in mind because there's also Pineup Road, I would be of interest. Mm -hmm. And so Pineup Road is also is an issue because the school. Right. Because they have a big building project coming up. They do. Which they've communicated to us. Yep. I, I, um, I talked too. to Rosalie um, from uh, EG, EGZA and um, I've had a little, I mean, the, the only Gabian baskets that I know of really was in South River and Conway and they got washed out in Irene and, or they got washed out even prior to Irene and they were replaced or something. But that makes sense in that area. And that's actually a pretty cheap fix. And um, they work with um, J uh, John Fields, who is what, who we've been working with at the conservation district. Remember that they, he did all that roads and um, rivers training here mm -hmm. um, a few years ago. We got a little grant for that. Yep. And then he's been working with the conservation district to, um, you know, come up with protocols for Massachusetts to use. Basically, we copied Vermont, but to to make sure how to handle water in roads so the rivers can move. And and that little stream gets so much water, mm -hmm. um, it buck, you know, it just bubbles up and it's really eating into the um, bank there. And and so putting in really what the gabion baskets is, is just it's like chain link kind of stuff that fill you the stone. fill the stone and you just tuck it in mm -hmm. and, it, and it builds habitat and it's non-invasive the problem is dep is not interested in these kind of unusual mm -hmm. um, fixes so we might have a little bit of a permitting problem just because they're real slow and they're not yeah anxious however we are applying for a grant, the conservation district is with the FERCOG to put together this task force to work with our state agencies to have more streamlining mm -hmm. permitting. And this could be a pilot for that task force to work with DEP because, you know, there's just, there's so many vacancies now and, and they're just Boy. not responsive. So I, I like, know that, uh, that Eagle Brook you know, they have their own engineers looking at this as well. So we yes. should all kind of come together and well, see what we Well, I think it's a can... timing issue. Right. Um, it's great to sort of get a task force together, but if their timing is outside of what, what Eagle Brook needs, we need to be prepared. Well, I think we can role. coordinate it because yeah. the Long Island Sound Initiative that we started, I don't know, six or seven years ago with Debbie Shriver and I got, got the states together. It's got 140 million this year from right. the federal government. So I think they're very excited to, and, and Massachusetts is just, you know, they, there's projects happening in Vermont, there's projects happening in New Hampshire and Connecticut, but nothing's happening in Massachusetts because of DEP. So I think this is gonna happen and we can volunteer this project Let's do tonight. It. So I, I will call and talk to Eagle Brook yeah, and, to and see if they are willing to work with, DEP, you know, with John Fields and, and maybe Rosalie and, Try to figure out. I know how. they're anxious at, at our luncheons. Yeah. They're really anxious to kind of come up with a That's plan. That's why they wanted to away. see this. Yeah. So yeah. that they could yeah. take it to their engineers. Yeah. Because, because so. they have to move a lot of material up and down that road. And they're concerned because well, he does note the sheeting across the road makes it difficult. Right. But that's not going to be fixed until we repave. Oh yeah, a different pitch. Right. No, the there's totally. It's going to be. A, yeah. I mean, this is temporary, and then we get to rebuilding the, the whole thing. this is really non-invasive and it's actually very mm -hmm. a bio friendly kind of solution. So mm -hmm. I, I think if we volunteer this fix, work with Eagle Brook so that they're, you know, 
it's their engineering expense and they're willing to work on it. I think we could pull this off without too much of a problem. That'd be great. All right. Um, can, I, can I ask an educational please. question? Yes. Um, Casey, uh, what is the threshold level at which you go from being able to award a small contract for like road work and having to go to the RFP process? It depends. So it's it can be an invitation bid process. It can be a request for proposal process. Depends on what you're procuring and depends on the materials and whether it's building design, goods and services, or you know materials even for public works projects, which are flat service projects. Mm -hmm. We have a cheat sheet that um, the procurement officers use. And we also have an association we work with in addition to you know, our personal contacts as right. Andrea knows I work with her a lot. Um, it really depends on what you're looking for. So up until in most cases between zero and 10,000, you can use good business practices. Right. Generally we go out and get quotes anyway. Yeah. Right. Over that, then you do a three quote, quote request for the scope of services. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we would need to do something along that nature because it, yeah. it's a it's a flat project, but it involves materials. So right. It really depends on what you're looking for. So, like the river road thing would be possibly a three quote thing, or probably yeah. if yeah. it's over ten thousand, between ten and fifty, it's 50. it's That's a quote. The, that was yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. In that, okay. Yep. In that yeah. range. Thank you. Okay. So uh, next item is to. Um, so you guys are okay. Oh yes, yeah. Please, okay. I know that Casey and you. Will well, work what on I just want to make sure that I'm conveying this right. Yeah, we need please. To let uh, Kevin, Chris, and John know. Right. So you want to address this uh, work with a get a quote for the River Road section. Mm -hmm. It, for that for that ditch for that for ditch, ditch on the okay. west right. on the and west. See if we can side. stabilize stabilize the road. <laughs> But I still want to move forward with the hazardous mitigation part for fixing the slide. That's why we have to measure our yeah, money two different, expenditure. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, report back, see what you guys come up. Yeah, with. and and so there's only one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, you notice they're paving on Sugarloaf Street. Yes. And they're they're hardly going down. I mean, they, they, yeah, they, they're not even grinding it down to the patches. They only have. And from a practical point of view, that's like. This is, I think they had extra money. This wasn't like, hey, we're going to fix all of Okay, because I just want to make no. sure. Remember, we are. It was are just like they had the a few extra infra bucks. The infrastructure part <laughs> is. We're not interested in taking that part. over. I yep, know. exactly. Okay. Until they dig that all the way. I think they had extra money and they, they thought, you know, this has been an issue. Let's just get a, a skim okay. on it for now. And at least that's from my understanding. Yeah. It's not a whole. Okay. Wholesale fix because we're not interested in taking a road that's got put in the minutes inches. that yeah. there is no um you know all the infrastructure underneath is is falling apart and they still it's, need to replace yes it. and we aren't doing anything Just, until they get that report. They had a little extra money to do to do the so one sure. thing I will say based on the MVP update you guys just approved. Um there's an element of that request that goes right to complete streets. We can't do complete streets until we pick a sugar road street. Right. So everybody just needs to take a step back on that one mm -hmm. because if yeah. we can't get the road to the place that the town's willing to accept it, right? We're not that doesn't that. happen in the center of town in the method that, that I think may be intended. Yeah, I know. Yep. I, know. Sure. I just wanted it in the minutes that we are yeah. paying attention and it's not, this is not like, oh, this is done now. Yeah, no, no, no. I no. think they had some okay. extra money and they're just trying to fill some. Okay, no, 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 that's fine. Clean it up a okay. bit. Yeah. I, I just, if my memory serves, they didn't do it that long. But they did the same skim coating yep. not long ago. It's true. And falls right apart at, again. Look, look, yeah. I mean, when you put this much. Yeah, it's nowhere near work. enough to fix the structure underneath. And the Little Meadow Road thing, I think, has already been dealt with. Yes. The, yeah, the under Little Meadow Road. Emergency that, I think that was time. That, that actually fell apart yeah. that night after yeah. my, yeah. I visited it. Yeah. That the, the erosion so controls from the previous That got fixed right immediately. Washed away. So, yeah, it's, it's already been fixed. Okay. Yeah, at DA's expense, I believe. Yeah, they fixed it because they didn't want to lose the road to the track. Yeah, so that was good. Um, so home rule petition. So um, this is um, this is a, a motion I'll read to kind of just we're, we're petitioning to split the two positions. Yes. And uh, so motion, I move that the the board adopt the home rule petition as approved at the April twenty fifth. 2022 town meeting article 20 and submit same to the general court second 
Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hi, Hilchi, Carolyn. aye. Oh, sorry, Carolyn. Oh, no, go ahead. Please. Tim Hilchi, aye. We have to have an order. We should yes, I know. We'll figure out. We're going to do this. I always I step right here. Right? Let's go, go right to right. left, right to left. Yeah. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Neff, aye. Great. Or left to right, whichever. <laughs> <laughs> so um, then we need the board to authorize the chair to sign the letter, the cover letter. Okay. Which follows, and it, it doesn't have letterhead on it, but the version that's ready for Trevor to sign is in the signature file and is, oh, and okay. it's been is set up with yep. letterhead. All right. Do you want us to make a motion on sure. that? Sure. I make yeah. a motion that we um, have the chair sign the letter to the cover letter for the petition. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, aye. There we go. We're going to get this down. <laughs> two, two meetings. And so just to advise everybody, this once this is signed and ready to go, we're going to priority mail this out to Boston. Okay. And either Corinne or Cameron Lease from Gen Senator Corinne's first office is going to walk it into the house. We will also send them the certifications of the articles, the testimony letters. Okay. Um, but what will happen? That is, has to be done before June 30th, right? Well, Here's what we're going to do. I've because written your testimony. The new session starts July 1st, I think. July 31st is the end of their session. So here's what I'm going to tell Cameron. And he and I discussed it yesterday when I talked to him. But I'm going to make it very clear that we need to get this done sooner rather than later. We have two testimony letters from Jen Wallace yeah. and from Sarah. And I have one drafted for you guys. I wasn't, we had a problem. I wasn't able to finish it. Um, but really, the point to get across to them is, once this comes through and is fish, officially accepted, it will go to a committee for review. The committee will review it and they will schedule a hearing and the opportunity for us to testify at that hearing will be open and either in writing or, or I think they will still have remote testimony from what Cameron said. And then it goes through their, the rest of their approval process. They may make some language tweaks to it, so we'll have to keep our eyes open for that. But I expressed to him very clearly, we cannot keep working like this. So I made a point in your letter, and I had Brenda proof it. I made a point in the letter to say, this needs to happen as soon as possible, because this is a critical piece of our operational structure. So I just wanted the board to understand that I was trying to make that point. No, that's good. That's fine. Thank you. So the next item is the Franklin Land Trust is doing their, this is the 17th annual self-guided recreational bike ride, which is the D2R2 on Saturday, August 20th, 2022. And this is just a, a letter informing us of the, you know, we have about a, a 1,500 riders that, you know, will we'll leave at a staggering time. So between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. from the headquarters, that's on south, um, south of village of Old Deerfield out in the field. So they set up tents and and, um, and a place there. So most riders will return anywhere between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. Um, so that's that. So I don't think we need to do anything with that, right? So we're done. I think you just approve it and make yeah. sure that they coordinate with John. Yeah, yep. I think they've done that in the past, right? So make a motion to approve the event and coordinate with Chief Ajurek. Um, I'll second that. All, right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great, good event. Um, there, is, there is a second part to that. Is there a liquor it's license a, on that? Day? No, it's actually about a grant, a D2R2, a grant for D2R2, but it's a very small amount and I really don't know what we would qualify for. Oh, this is lastly, we'd like to give back to the communities to support yeah. the work of the Franklin Land Trust. Our goal is to offer Grants to support projects and programs throughout the D2R2 route towns. There's stipulations. They support environment land. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to think about that. Yep. Um, we are we are putting in the conservation district is putting in small forty thousand dollar grant. Um, well, it's actually next week is a letter of, of intent, and if it's approved, then we'll. I'll put a full grant in for July, but it is in support of um, yard by yard conservation mm -hmm. practices. We're, we're 
um, hoping to buy plants. We're hoping to have landscape person available for consulting, you know, uh, yard, land, you know, homeowners can call up and sign up and, um, you know, have someone come and, you know, do consulting to their yard mm -hmm. and, you know, to set up pollinators, um, gardens, to set up rain gardens, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so if we get that, um, we could use this kind of thing towards, you know, plants or whatever, or, or um, we can buy a couple trees, some trees, because, you know, our tree belt is predominantly maple and, you know, we have um, more resilient, we need we more, need resilient, more resilient climate, um, resilient plant, you know, trees. So have more diversity in our tree belt. So, you know, there's a couple of things we could think of. Well, one well, of the stipulations is you have to provide volunteers for the event. Yep. And I don't know how and the we request do that. between 250 and 500. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be hard to kind of, I mean, if anybody has an idea and wants to come forward, love to entertain it. Yeah. Well, All we right. have, I mean, there's a, townspeople do volunteer for this. Yeah. So um, we, we just need happen. to coordinate with our volunteer, you know, anybody from Deerfield who is volunteering yep. to, um, you know, so we can qualify for that. We'll see. All right. Okay. So next up is a Deerfield Academy one day liquor licenses. There are two of them. Um, these would be the uh, date of the events would be 10, uh, see, June 10th through June 12th. Um, these are um, alumni reunions. Uh, so Friday, June 10th and Saturday, June 11th and uh, to 10 a.m. Sunday, June 12th at the Hess Center, Coke Center and the Great Tent and other locations. I make, I make a motion that we approve them. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. So these we already did. And then there are others probably in here. You have Yankee Candle Atlas Farm, both have liquor license yep. applications. So there's two here. So um, we'll go through and sign these after. So we've got that done. And then uh, there is, again, I'll keep reading these as we go through. The next is a Yankee Candle Village One Day Liquor License. And that is for... Uh, <clears throat> Actually, that's coming up. That's the tomorrow, isn't yeah. it? Is it for tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. girls oh, yeah. night May out. May 5th, yep. <laughs> We're supposed to get these sooner than uh -huh. that. I know. Please, yeah, have a, I'm sure you've talked Improvise, to them already. Adapt and overcome. I know you guys are always great in the office doing that, but they know to get them in sooner and they always forget. So please say no, is this a girl's no night out? This is a girl's no night hey, I'm yes. not interested. You in can't that. do that. <laughs> I do not want to deny that. Just so. <laughs> so um, all those in favor? Or did we get a second? Oh, no, I'll, we get a motion I'll make a motion to approve. All this right, I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Now, the, the last one here is the Atlas Farm One Day Liquor License. I don't have a um, certificate of insurance. It's not received yet on this one. I can speak on that behalf. Oh, um, thank you. At the very end of the day, Pat had sent an email um, from the insurance company, and they apologized for the delay. They did send um, a a proof that it is in process and they didn't okay. expect that it wouldn't come and if you wanted to just say contingent upon getting that certificate yeah. that sounds good so make a motion to approve the one day liquor license for atlas farm um it's kelly's farm store llc atlas farm for um a liquor license for it looks like may 21st i'm sure we get it by then anyways but yeah on contingent on receiving the certificate of insurance it also is a, a bigger event, I think, on Atlas Farm. What's that? Right, Casey, isn't this a... We have a plant sale to celebrate the beginning of the gardening season. The event will take place at the Atlas Farm store in a parking lot in the front store area. We'd like to serve beer from 12 to 4. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right. Do you guys want to sign those? Yes, I'm going to go stamps. through all of them and sign them. Yep, so we can do that. And then there's... Um, Up and bottom. 
we do that. And then there's uh, the next is the MARPA survey. What's a MARPA survey? Well, it's survey. how we want to spend, um, you know, the infrastructure money. Infrastructure and money? of course, it's scandalous. We don't have any infrastructure yeah. money. What is so this? Maybe we could say that. Where is um, this? I have not seen this. Oh, so oh the it's regional. Behind I, I, just, I just wanted, I, I mean, it, it's not a big deal. I just didn't feel comfortable just filling it out myself. Right. I felt it should be a board board input into this. Okay. Um, unless you feel felt differently. So I would just like to ask where the money is. Well, we physically have to go on the site and fill it out. That's why I right. wanted you to see the, the fact sheet. Okay, the fact sheet. Okay. It's supposed to be five to six billion dollars of grants over the next five years. And so great. You could do improvements for for instance, this goes right along with the conducting speed management pro projects along North Main Street. If you recall, we put a grant in to for design of crosswalks. Uh, the oh. crosswalks, and they have in, in some of these, you could get additional lighting or, a, you know, the, the one on five and 10 would be perfect. I mean, that, did you see the one that went in it? That the, that's a nice setup. Right. It's similar to what Sunderland did. Actually, yeah. DOT did in Sunderland. Which, that was what we that's designed. That's what we should do. Yeah. That's what we designed. Let's we designed get a grant for it. One, two, three. No, we put in for a grant for that. Yeah. That's Can what we, we did. That's what we need is, is so if they would fund programs like that, it could really help towns who are trying to do traffic management. That's what we need. Um, around areas of town. And we all know that was one of the reasons we started discussing that. And Denise Mason worked on that. Yes. And if so, they could slow down traffic coming through the right. center of the town. Like right. And we put together a quick grant about it. We got some help from the and put together a quick grant. Okay. And so things like that, if they were to give us money for things like that, that would really help. Yes. Me. Okay. So I, if you want to fill that out or somebody wants to do that, I'm all for that. Sounds good. Or do, you, do you want to do, or are you filling it out? No, or? I mean, Casey yeah. can do it. Or, or I, I just, Casey doesn't. <laughs> do you want us to do it? Why don't you want us to do it? No, want, us no do it or I, somebody... I just wanted us to have a priority. Yeah, the I would say those. Like crosswalk, yes. bicycle lane. Yes. And yeah, and so that. that's what you're looking at is you're looking, yeah. you're looking at things that you might be for, you might be thinking about as you're planning. Now we can't do a complete streets project for the entire center of town right yet, but we could be thoughtful about requesting yeah. money for imp for activities we would want to pursue the, I guess, um, is, is the way I would frame it. The sidewalk in front of Cheslick's is where I'd like Sidewalks to Sidewalks along that. Elm Street and those are right. the worst, those, but they have to be completely ground down. Let's and do it. Yeah, but we have to design them. All right. So somebody to, there's six billion dollars here. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. So money. I'm I'm afraid. So small cities and towns I think we just need to get our word out. And okay. so do you, so Carolyn, do you want to do this or do you want me to do this? Well, no, I, I just, I'd be thrilled if you want to do it. I just didn't feel comfortable going ahead without some board discussion of what our priorities were. And, you know, it, if, I mean, I'm in agreement with everyone. So yep. let's just put it in for that. Well, just, one of your priorities is this economic development thing, particularly with the Leary lot. If we create some traffic management strategies and get some money for it, I think that flows with what I've heard you tell me. Yes, was that's kind of exactly what I, what I want to do. And I, I feel that's very strong. Enough. People would appreciate it. They need to feel safe. That's, I mean, mm -hmm. you want the ability to, what's a vital downtown it's walkable and it's sociable and if people feel safe then they will come downtown so let's do anything we can to keep people safe and and social downtown and what about uh, what about the um the areas where the schools are i mean i mm -hmm. i actually north main street in particular um raised we, we put in a we put i think we're going to get that grant by i haven't time. heard denise just sent me an email about it mm -hmm, we put right. a grant in to yeah. do those crosswalks right. and yeah. then do sidewalks along north main street right. just so we could have you know some visibility right because you know bill mayor pc is not wrong it mm -hmm. needs to have True. some visibility we yeah. just yep. needed to be able to sort of connect the dots right
All right, so um, moving on. We did the planning board request for driveway, but we also have a ZBA request for comments on a one bedroom B and B on Grave Street. <clears throat> this is at 60 Grave Street special permit seeking to operate a one bedroom B and B in their home. Um, do we have zoning approving that? Is that a that's up for discussion? Is yeah. It? So they have an application. They're looking for your input. Jennifer can probably give you more information on that, right, Jennifer? Yes. Or would you like to elaborate? Sure. Right. So this is a property owner on Grave Street that would um, like to operate her one uh, a one bedroom B and B. Um, it was formerly, I believe, an in law apartment, and since the in law has passed and. She'd like to make some extra income. It is allowed with special permit to have a B and B in that location. Um, she has included in her application letters from neighbors. She went around and spoke with neighbors and told them and asked them, you know, what their thoughts were. And they have some of them have given their opinions that are in the packet. See that? Oh, she talked to quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. So she spoke to me, she showed, um, there, I think there's an image, I think in the packet of the space, or maybe she shared it with me, I can't remember now, oh my gosh. Um, but it looks like a nice space to operate a and b and there would only be, you know, one couple or one person at a time. It sounds like it's minimal impact. So I, have, I don't have any concerns at this point. Yeah, there's no, um, and our bylaws support this. Okay. I don't have any concerns either. I assume it would get, um, would the Board of Health inspect and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, good. Yeah, I'm good. It would be like, anybody be else? Yeah. Kind of thing. Anybody else have any comments? No, I read read the package and I, I think she did a really good job. Yeah, she did. Calling no the neighbors. That. Yeah. So I'll just make a note, no, no comment at this time or no concerns at this time. I also spoke with her um, about the, for the, like a pre-submittal meeting for the ZBA application, so. Okay. Great. Um, so appointments, we have um, appointments and resident nations we have uh, pam predmore to the senior housing committee pam nice thank you um, Hi, thank pam. you i'm really hey. excited you're gonna help that's awesome pam has been really good about coming to um senior housing meeting and i know that um we on the committee would be thrilled to death to have her join our committee well i, I will make that um motion to to appoint uh, pam predmore to serve on the senior housing committee and I'd second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We miss so you on the ad hoc town common committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, I had to resign from there when some family issues I came up. Yeah. Those are mostly resolved. And I will just say, for the record, as I think I mentioned in the email to the select board, that one of the reasons that I felt it, I felt called to do this is the fact that uh, I worked for the Amherst Housing Authority for 21 years, during which part of the time I managed elderly housing on three sites under the state's 667 housing for the elderly and handicapped. So I've seen firsthand um, throughout the area, because of course we accepted applications from all over, um, the need for more public senior housing, subsidized housing. So I'm, I'm excited to hear that that might be happening in town and want to do what I can to make that possible. We're so grateful for your service. So thank, thank you, you so much. I know they'll be very happy to have you on that on that committee. Thank you very much. Pam, I'm sure um, Pat will be in contact. You just need to go and get sworn in. Yep. I will do that. I know there's also some forms to, that I have to uh, sign. So I'll do that. 
Thank you. Um, so is there a time frame? I mean, sh what, what are the hours tomorrow you're open? We're, sorry, go ahead. Nine to four, nine to four, they're open here, right? Okay. Friday we're, Friday we're closed to the public. So just make note if you don't get in tomorrow. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Um, we have uh, some appointments to the uh, police department, Capuano and on Havel. Do I, I'm trying to find that in here. Right here. Oh, you've got it there? Okay, great. So, <clears throat> Honorable Select Board from uh, uh, Chief John Paturk. So we have two police appointments. Uh, dear Honorable Board, I'm respectfully requesting the following individuals be appointed as full-time police officers for the town of Deerfield, effective Monday, May 30th, 2022, with a term to expire June 30th, 2023. As the board is aware, we uh, we currently have one opening for a full-time uh, police officer as Ma Matt Wozniak has uh, departed for the state police. Off of the officer uh, Timothy Capuano is, is um, an internal candidate, 32 years old, born and raised in Deerfield and has worked part-time for our agency, just shy of two years. He will be attending the full-time police academy at uh, Western Mass Springfield um, starting on Monday, May, uh, June 6th, 2022. His starting pay in accordance with the contract will be 2376 hourly, which July 1st will go to 2542. Um, please also appoint Officer Michael W. Havel as a part-time police officer, effective immediately, starting at $23 an hour. Mike has recently retired as a state police major in charge of the entire western part of the state. Mike's resume is so extensive that it rivals anyone I've ever seen. Mike lives in Conway and is interested in working both uh, part-time shifts for the and, and details for our agency. So I would make a motion to uh, appoint Timothy uh, Capuano as a full-time officer for Town of Deerfield. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Um, just that we really appreciate him. He's has been That's our, great. he and Jen Bartek have been our police officers for our um, vaccine, COVID vaccine, and, and they're wonderful. They're great, really great. Yeah, I will second that. I met Timothy at, uh, at the DES uh, most recent vaccine clinic. Seems like a gentleman. Yeah, very happy to have him. So all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nuss, aye. And then I'll make a motion to um, appoint Officer Michael W. Habel as a part-time police officer, effective immediately. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nuss, aye. Great, thank you so much. That is done. There's no other permits. Um, for approval right now there's a little bit of mail um i would just on the mail um on that winter um recovery assistance program casey is this we could use some of this you have to have the money spent by june we could use some of this money from for the, the Wrap. road so before we commit to that i want to talk to kevin and chris miller about how they plan to use it because okay. i know they've been discussing it okay right. um I do. I did think of that myself because that damage does relate to it. Right. Um, I mean, the winter definitely. I have video because of you. <laughs> yeah, no. But well, the freeze cycle. Uh, the other thing, could you just check and see if a pavement management plan would be eligible? Don't um, we have one? We have one. We we years ago. Remember, I fought and fought and got it, and we didn't have a very expensive one but it really worked. I mean, we saved up three years of chapter 90 money. We just did River Road. It gives us a plan, but the problem I'm concerned about is that um, with climate change, you know, you get a 60 degree day and then you get single digit days. And what happens is the parameters for the pavement management plan have no climate change um, factors built into the plan. So your pavement is artificially, the life of the pavement is artificially extended and it doesn't take in consideration the um, climate impacts of, of these winters that we're having. Um, we get potholes a lot sooner. We, um, 
you know, the cracking of the pavement is like a regular winter thing now, the last few winters. And, and I know that's one of the things that I think Chris wanted to be able to use some of the wrap money for was for some issues that were up on, I think it was Wall Street, wasn't it? Well, Lore Road, I mean, it's brand new pavement and it, you know, we've got to make sure that we patch it up quickly. Um, so anyway, I, I just feel like we need to make an adjustment to our pavement management plan or get a new pavement management plan that has climate resilient, you know, kind of formula in, embedded into it. So we have a better idea of what, how our roads are going to be because, you know, I mean, I, I, I think it works. We, it, and, and you can tell people that, you know, we're planning to do your road in three years or we're planning to do your road in two years. And so people understand that we have a plan and it keeps um, just because you're complaining doesn't you have some way to control the complaints and make people understand that this is what we're doing. You know, you, you have a real plan. So how come but my, I'm just concerned it's not a realistic plan at the moment. All right. Let me um, chat with Chris okay. and Kevin, but is, did you have any idea of who you wanted to use for that? No, because I don't, I don't know who is going to um, really do a good job with the, the climate resiliency thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've been complaining about it at state meetings for, I don't know, a couple of years now, but it doesn't seem like anybody. It might not have hit their radar screen, really. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so we may have to do a procurement for that one, depending on what it entails. I don't know what a pavement management plan entails. In well, terms you, of get, comprehension. you get what, what it is, someone comes out and evaluates your, the condition of your roads, and then they do formulas, and, and then you, they come do a priority list of, of your roads. But the problem is the pavement's just not lasting. Right. You know, lower road should be okay for 15 years. Guess what? It's already breaking up in some spots because of the winter that we just had. And it's brand new. You know, that's terrible. So we, we've got to come up. I, I, don't, I don't know who's out there that does that kind of stuff. We've got to figure out, call around, put it out to your STAM group and see if anybody is doing pavement management plans that have climate resiliency built into the formula. Mm -hmm. and, and or, you know, how, how are we, how do we pay for climate resiliency? Do we have to add additional, you know, asphalt? I, and I and I so that's know. another thing. It'll have an asphalt effect. The materials will be affected. Mm -hmm. I right. would guess. I, I don't yeah. know. I, I, I mean, I don't know enough, but I know enough to research. know that it's a problem. Yeah. I know DOT is not focused on that because mm. I've seen their, I've seen the bids for highway services, the highway I know. materials right. bids. But I mean, it's stuff that's coming up in different discussions that I go to, but no one seems to have a solution. The last item is the uh, EMS, Franklin County EMS Committee. I, I mean, it looks like Zach could talk with them, but we're all set there. This is for towns that don't really have EMS. And um, I think, I, I can't tell if this is um, a, a company looking to contract with towns or if it's an actual committee looking to figure out the state of EMS in the, in the county. So, anyways. Why don't we have um, Zach, can Zach can look at Zach. it. Yeah, he might have already been in touch with him. Figure something? out how we're supposed to respond. To okay. This. Kevin says there's environmental rules that affect that stuff. Pavement. All right. Um, Somehow or other, he's listening. Oh, he's watching me on TV. He's All right. got oh. his eye on us. Oh, he's got his eye on us. <laughs> so, um, let's see. So, the town administrator's report, do you want to hit on anything, Casey? So there's a couple things I want to hit on. I mentioned the home rule petition earlier, but yep. we also have follow up on another legislative request, which is the request for additional additional liquor licenses as they relate to marijuana retail. Right. Um, I had a long conversation with Senator Pemberton's uh, legislative aide, Amanda Pace, and we went back and forth on this because apparently the general court is loath to issue these licenses without some sort of economic development identifier connected to it. So after some discussion, um, I sent him the tourist overlay because that is an economic 
yeah. factor that we approved last year. So we played phone tag today. We're going to try to talk to each other tomorrow, but I wanted to let you know that oh, if we a... can't find a way forward, this may die and we may have to start. Well, we may also have to just find out what's going on with, you know, Deerfield Naturals or, you know, who, we've given multiple HDAs out and crickets. So one thing. So I want you... to find out how long that HDA is standing and, and when we can terminate it. So we can't terminate it this year. Right. What we can okay. do we is we could a send problem. a letter and notify them. Yeah, we're not um, interested. We're in concerned that this isn't being implemented. They're and actually, I've already it. talked to council about yeah, it. Yeah, they're just sitting on it. Um, and it's driving me crazy. So like, I talked to council no about it. We can send that letter tomorrow. Nothing. It's been um, crickets for years. Because Sunny Days did give you an update on yep. where they are. So oh, they're yeah. moving forward. And I know Tim knows because yes, he we, was we aware the of woods. it. <laughs> yeah. This past week, and I know they were out there doing some borings today. I think, right? I don't know if yeah, you saw that. Were, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like we're going to get some movement on that one. Yeah. But yeah. Frankly, I don't disagree with you. I just there's a, there's a I'm limit sure. within the legislative yeah, statute it. about how long yep. it can be in place. Right. That was one of the reasons that when I came on board, I said to you, "Why don't we put something that limits? Right. Put a timeline yeah, in move, place." Then, then we. And so you saw Ember it. Gardens is amenable to that. Yep. And so was Sunny Days. Yep. So this is the outlier, but it's tying up a retail license. It is. It so is. So it's it's kind and of a negotiation with Senator Comerford and it done. Representative Blaze staff people. Okay. So I'll let you know what else comes out of that after I talk to them. Yep. Um, community One Stop I'm meeting with Denise and Alice Rich Lewis, who's that grant writer we hired, um, to talk about Community One Stop because we got our response to our letter of interest. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through the application process and start hammering that out. Um, Hamshaw Lumber. So I haven't been able, I hadn't been able until I talked to Lisa yesterday to set up a meeting. We're going to meet with her on, we're going to meet, Bob and I are going to meet with her to go over steps forward because we need to show her what we discussed yeah. with their management team mm -hmm. and the, you know, what her suggestions are in terms of working with them about the land itself. Yeah. Um, because it does abut the Leary lot. Mm -hmm. And so they want to expand just, to, you know, Tim, they want to expand out their building, but we need to pay attention to how water's running off of that, the space they may need at the back. They were interested in the land swap. And this predates, uh, this predates Trevor, Carolyn. They had this conversation when Bernie was here. But something happened with the owner at the time. So, yes. you know, they're motivated. Politely. <laughs> Politely, yeah. Um, I, yep. I just remember that there was a problem. Yes. So it sort of fell off the radar screen. And so Lisa said two things. Well, we've always been interested. Yes. Right. We just need a good partner. But I think now we have like a way to, to move forward. I think we have a partner. Yep. And we have a partner. So Lisa's going to go back through her documents because she remembered it. Yeah. But what she needs is Bob and I to sh sort of show her the, the plot, plan. plot plan of yeah. what it could look like. Right. And so and was, our initial meeting, we had uh, Kurt Seaman from the fire district over there because there's some concern about access yep. past BBC's lot into the back of the Hampshire's yeah. lumber area. So we're just trying to come you know, lay all that out. And I'd love to get um, Jeff from Berkshire Design involved with well, we're not quite there yet, know, and that's but the just point that we need to we need a path forward legally so that we can start right. knocking down dominance. Exactly. Okay, I'd so love to have that. Forward. My main concern <coughs> is water. As you know, mm -hmm. we have to handle water. Of course. And so we need to have a grading plan with that. Our grading plan is integrated to their grading plan. And BBC. And everybody yep. works together so yep. that we don't have two separate different things. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean, all, that's my have only one guy concern. looking at all of it. Right. We yep. have to have one person that is reviewing all the water and that everything mm -hmm. is, whoever does Close the work board. is doing the work all at the same time. I agree. And we have money. Yep. We have ARPA money. It's, we just need to work, march together. Yep. So it's not it's duplicating things and right. it's all together right. and it works and together. All of the, and we're not doing 25 year storms. Most engineers, mm -hmm. most plans are 25 year storm. We want a hundred year storm. You know, I'm sorry, hundred year storms are happening every other year. So that that is the design minimum 
for water. This is the downtown, the center of our whole area. We need to have good filtration, mm -hmm. good devices, and we want it green and attractive. It needs to be beautiful. So I, I feel like this partnership is going to be really good, and we have money set aside mm -hmm. from our ARPA. And, and if we can just get access onto Elm Street, we want to make sure that there's right. a and so sidewalk. That's what we, it is. we want a sidewalk next to the road. We don't want mm -hmm. people walking down the road. Yep. in the middle of the driveway. We want one-way flow. Again, safety, sociability, walkability, yep. you know, get people down here. Right, so okay. we just yeah. need to start that, yep. those conversations, but I want to know where we stand legally, legally. so that yeah. I can yeah. better no, I agree. It. I agree. I just, that's, right. It's know, just, that's it's town meeting season, so she has some limited. <laughs> that's fine. You just know that I'm concerned about the right. whole mm -hmm. grading. So. I know you were concerned about water, and I made that very clear. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Anything I know. else? But, um, it's better to be fussy about it. No, no, I don't disagree. That's why I yeah. wanted them to hear what you said. Yeah, I know. Because I think it makes sense for us to make them very aware that this is going to be something that we're going to want to see successfully managed between the town. Yeah. Well, so, it will be, it will be a, a key keystone to our whole downtown here. Right. And right. It's beautiful. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm thrilled. Um, I have a question and then... I've been working on MVP reports because I was catching up. We had some pay so we have to do these payments. When we do payments for con conservation works yeah. and regenerative design, we have to split everything at the time we do the payment. So we have to pay out of contracted services at the same time we're paying out of the grant. So it literally requires me to go through every single thing and itemize after I put all the information in. So I'm catching up on those. I'm two reports down. But I did want you to know that we're getting towards the end of your, that grant period. Um, and so Chris, I blind carbon copied you guys. Chris had some bills that he wanted paid, paid but he sent them too late for the warrant. So I had Jennifer work on it with the vendors and he should be able to pick everything up and they're gonna send us the invoices. Like one of them doesn't even close a quote into an invoice until you pick the material. Right. So Jennifer worked on that, and they'll go into the warrant okay. um, as soon as we have them. Um, speaking of warrants, does the board want to have P Trevor continue to sign the warrants? Um, I know, just thought about that right before the meeting. I, I, I would like to make a motion to have Trevor continue to sign them, but at the same time, I think, um, Tim, if you just want to look at it, it's a really good... Um, it's I a mean, great way to figure out of, how we because of COVID. Yep. You know, we started just having Trevor just go over the all the warrants, but it's actually really good to go through the warrant to get a handle on some of the bills that we get. Mm -hmm. So you might want to just look at them. Yeah. yeah. Are we talking about the warrants that we just went through in town meeting? No, no. no these no, are all warrants or bills we pay. Oh, okay. So, so they call it the same bills. thing. They do. I know it's bizarre. I know. It's not like bills. It's every two weeks we pay bills. Okay. It's usually on a two, uh, Wednesday or Tuesday, depending Brenda on. Brenda works them. Brenda works them up for Tuesday. She gets all the bills okay. together, puts them in a warrant, and that's what we. I, I go through, and you've got a payroll, and you've got a um, you know materials kind of stuff, and you. Get the two two warrants yeah. you signed, and um, it's good to kind of you don't have to go through every bill, but you go through yeah. the uh, header sheet, and it kind of tells you what we're spending where. If you see anything that's kind of outside, you're like, hmm, what's that? Check in with Brenda. She'll He's really good at scrutinizing. And, uh, Let me just tell you. <laughs> I tried to. I tried to. <laughs> I, actually, no, I, 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 that's why I'm actually making the motion that you continue to do that because you, I, I'm really impressed. You do follow through because you have called me for questions and yep. stuff. Yeah. And, and I, so I know you're paying attention. Yeah. And then it's just, it's just but it, nice. This is an orientation thing. Though. Yeah, it Absolutely. does. I think it would help, it, it, it yeah, help yeah. a ton to look at them. But so, the, for the, sure. the reason I'm asking is because those are paid off select board weeks. Right? Yeah. So that would be done. The warrant will close. The bills payable are due Friday. And then they get processed Monday, Tuesday. And it's available for Trevor to sign up. So that was the reason I asked. And I think we, the, we've we done it where I sign them, but we also have made a motion where any one of us, let's say if I'm out of town, right. or oh, Tim, yeah. you know, Tim can run down because he's you know in town, can come and sign them. So can I. Totally fine. Yeah, anybody can come and do those. So, so the that, is we got to make sure people get paid, and sometimes yes. the bills are critical. So. Right. You sure. need a bill so I'm just throwing it out there because I thought that might be yep. the case. I just wanted to know for sure. So uh, we, have a motion. we have a motion. To the same practice. 
Trevor will authorize the chair to sign, Trevor. Um, however, if anybody can anybody sign, can sign yep. if you know Trevor's not here. Or yep. Whatever. And you're always welcome to look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sign sign and do that. Yeah, it's we'll a, give you, yeah, you absolutely. You can go through sure. with if we can yeah. see. We used Anytime. to have to sign all three of us to sign off, and it's you know sometimes it was really stressful. And then COVID municipal COVID modernization stress. actually yeah. changed yeah. years ago, but a lot of people didn't implement. Yeah, it. well, we long. you know because we like to see. Where all the dollars on. absolutely but that's your job. i have to say with covid it was just so nice to have trevor come down and do it every two weeks it seemed like it was just one more thing you know we were doing yep well i'll second the motion all right okay. all those in favor we talked this over for hours all those in favor <laughs> uh, tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye aye carol right. i don't mean to you to do that no no I it's good to it's, it's, it's kind of i don't want to give it up no nope. it's kind of nice it is nice I enjoy yeah. doing it. I really enjoy learning about it and seeing what's going on. And then you kind of compare it in your mind to um, the financials every yeah. month as to what's part left. Of the education I need to have. Exactly. Yep. So it works great. Works great. Trevor, are you yeah. taking public comment? Because we did already, but it's uh, but Pam, if you've got a comment quick. Yeah. You're, oh, you're, oh muted. you're muted. You're muted, Pam. Go ahead. Pam, you're muted. There you go. Okay, sorry. Um, I apologize. I'm still getting used to how these things go. Um, speaking of pavement, um, there is a stream that runs across or under uh, Grave Street, which is where I live, and it runs through our property. The culvert is collapsing. Um, we currently have cones placed on both sides of the road um, to prevent people from falling, cars getting stuck. Um, this is the second time that this has happened. And at this point, it's it's continuing to get considerably worse. Um, I wanted to thank the DPW for uh, responding immediately to my request for putting out cones there. But I, I just wanted you to know. So I, is do I need to call the DPW or what's the process for making sure that they know that situation exists. Well, you don't need to call. We're definitely uh, super aware. We, you know, we literally have well over 300 culverts that are failing, <laughs> but um, but I know that's a well-traveled road. So we'll talk to Chris and, and uh, Kevin about it as well. Um, yeah, because it's, it's a huge, no. it's a huge expense for the town. There's just, they're failing everywhere everywhere yeah and of course because of because of grave street looping with cross street and eastern avenue um not only is there a lot of vehicle tra vehicular travel but there are a lot of people walking um yeah. around the that loop so I, i'm just really concerned sure, um sure. one last thing carolyn uh, on another subject carolyn thank you very much for your comment about uh requesting people to fill out the senior um, serve the survey on senior housing. Um, that's also that request is also going out to all of the members of the women's club, as I said, I would do. So thank you for doing that. Yep. Yeah, thank it's, you. it's that card you got in the mail, a little house on the corner, and your key code is right above your name. And it's the housing survey, which is different than the senior program survey that people, mm -hmm. I think people thought are getting mixed same. up right that they had already done it and um so we just want to make sure we have a huge return yep. because if we have a huge return then we'll have more desirable financing i think yeah for sure and people and people can um, if they don't have the card anymore they can either contact lily dwight mm -hmm. to have another one sent to them or they can also do it online yes right thank you and, and senior center you can do it at the senior center as well so we'll entertain a motion to adjourn if there's no other business. I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn. And I will second that. All those in favor. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, aye.